This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, head over to BigHeadsMedia.com. Previously on TV Tuners. Swanson, you're telling me that the perfect condiment is ketchup? This is Q. Kioran will be executed on Sunday. Don't mind me. I'm just going to be in my room sobbing and listening to chill hip-hop beats. Yeah, I've got a motorcycle now. Who the hell put an atomic bomb on my train? Oh, that lime is spicy. And now, TV Tuners continues. Denver. Hi there, folks, and welcome to TV Tuners. It's a television podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive in the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson. With me, as always, is my co-host and uh, helpful guy who's writing a traveling guide, Keith uh, Snaremaster. I'm not going to do a voice this week. <laughs> Smart. This was a test. You passed. <laughs> not racist. Finally, the curse has been lifted. No, the test yeah. is the episode itself. Ooh. You have Ooh. quite a bit to get through here. Ooh, my journey has just begun. Yes, it would appear so. Uh, and with us, as always, that other voice you hear is our co-host and... Uh, Racist turn-of-the-century author. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Racist turn-of-the-century author. You're right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like to I like to write books about strange happenings that underlie a very racist message. It's pretty Ooh, fun. I heard you wrote a poem about black people. Could you recite that to us? Well, I I don't want to get uh, hashtag canceled. Oh wow, I'm surprised Lovecraft knows about that one. And this is how I assume Lovecraft sounds. This is the voice of Lovecraft. Yeah, that sounds about right. Welcome to TV Tuners, where we talk about TV, nothing else, only television. I heard you also had a cat with an interesting name. Could you tell us yeah, that you... cat's name? <laughs> Do you want to tell us that name? <laughs> Listen, I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to get my cat canceled here. <laughs> well, the cat, I don't think, is, in tr- is is able to choose its own name, so I think you would be the one getting canceled. Well, I don't want to get canceled myself, though. Hmm. Well, you're, you can like go back to being dead. Does it really matter? Yeah, why don't you go back to being dead, where you belong, in the grave, old man? I wrote some good books. Uh, can you name one? Uh, I have to go. <laughs> oh. Wow! That's how, you get, that's how you get him, you have to ask him to name his own works. It's sort of like a, uh, saying your name scenario. Wow, he just dove into the spaces between spaces and vanished. Yeah, and now he's at the Mountain of Madness or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Swanson has not read a single Lovecraft thing. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. So yeah, uh, welcome to TV Tuners. Hey, if you like what you're hearing so far, why not consider subscribing? Ooh. We're available on all of the podcatchers of your choice. It's free. Apple Podcast, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. That's right, it's free. No harm, no foul. No strikes. That's right. All goals. <laughs> and uh, while you're there, why not consider leaving us a five-star review? It'd be very helpful, and we'd appreciate it. And it would uh, make me smile and laugh. How, give them a taste of what that would sound like, Keo. Okay, first the smile is uh, inaudible, but just know that I'm smiling. It sounds like... That- Stare. When I smile, I don't make any noise. Uh, this is like a dramatization. <laughs> okay, and yeah. then when I laugh, it'll sound like this. <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
Yeah. Well, uh, like my co-host Titus here, I um, <laughs> I also love leaving reviews and making people laugh. But if you want to actually like contact us, get in like get 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 into speaking terms with us, you know, be a friend. Why not follow us on Twitter? We're available Ooh. at TV Tuners, where there's tons of great TV content. Mm-hmm. Like you can also one. use the hashtag TV Tuners. We'll give a glance at what you're saying. And we have like four or five unpaid interns now working on the account. Yes, the greatest minds of our generation. That's right. They're all working to craft the greatest podcast account that you can find on the and internet. And they, they've even found a very good tweet for us this week. Oh, Perhaps yeah? Do you want to get to that right now? The week. Okay, let's, sure, let's get into it right now. <laughs> yes! Uh, at user Laroche tweets, that young man from Lovecraft Country is fine AF. Well, I mean, yeah, she's not, she, they're not wrong. Cat. Yeah, Cat is not wrong here. <clears throat> so, they're referring what? to the protagonist of the show, I'm assuming? Yeah, the guy who, for like most of the first half of the episode, is wearing the tightest shirts yes, imaginable. one, two sizes small for his body. His yeah, did they, porcelain did they, abs. Was that acceptable <laughs> in this time period? Uh, uh, I don't know if it was acceptable for the time period, but it sure was acceptable for the screen. I believe that Truman got reelected on his uh, free tickets to the gun show platform. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> People really forget to mention how jacked Truman was. <laughs> Did he walk around wearing like a tank top as well? He yeah. wanted to rename America to the United States of Lips. Yeah, but wow. that got shot down pretty quickly. Yeah. The things they don't teach us in history class... Yeah, this is the type of stuff you you wouldn't learn on any other podcast. Um, yeah, you know, it seems like the shirts that he's wearing are like specifically designed by the the crew from like some sort of fabric that is made to be tight as as tight as possible. <laughs> That's all they could afford after in the post war economy. Oh you know, yeah, because so it's Southeast sort of... Asia was still recovering, so they didn't have all the rare fabrics that allow you to picturing like a lab. Where they have like a like a three D hologram, uh, of yeah, this shirt. the Tuskegee Labs. Yeah, wait yeah. no. And they're yeah. like, we gotta make it, we gotta make it ten percent tighter. Yeah, they had two experiments going on. The first yes. one was oh. like a eugenic. <laughs> oh no! It's like a eugenic, like unethical medical. Examination. Yeah, and the second one was to make them feel as comfortable as possible with <laughs> ill-fitting clothing. Yeah. Anyway, let's tune in on this, please. Yeah, it's good. We can re- mood. Yeah. yeah Hashtag tune in. mood. <laughs> yeah, do we need a little more discipline when we're talking about the tweet of the week? No. <laughs> this I would is what people less. can expect when they get tweet of the week energy. <laughs> so congratulations, Kat. You've won tweet of the week. A winner is you. Um, But hey, if Twitter isn't enough... For you to get your fix, get your fill. Maybe you want a more personal connection to us. <laughs> Perhaps you would like an email. Yeah, if you, you have like any to quips, talk to me. Yeah, or well, any of us. Uh, we'll read them aloud on the show. If you have any quips, comments, questions, foresights, or otherwise, you can send them to us at TV Tuners Podcast at Gmail dot com. What's that email, Kyle Rain? Um, geez, Swanson, you're like. Like, hitting with a hard hitting question today. Like, what else are you going to ask me? What's the meaning of life? Jeez. That was my next so, question. Yeah. All right. So, for th- the first question you asked, though, is um, that email is TV Tuner, TV Tuners with, a, with an S at uh, Gmail. That's right. And as for the meaning of life, well, Swanson, I'll be honest with you. There is no one meaning to life. The meaning to life is whatever meaning you give it. Oh. Hmm, pretty lame. <laughs> There's always uh, the possibility to be happy as long as you're alive. Hmm. And also, the other meaning to life is uh, cute anime girls. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys can be like Liquid Geo, who sent this email, <gasps> titled Shipwrecked. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, fellas. You hear what happened to Pool Noodle Frank? No. He got snowed in on the way to California. Froze ten feet beneath the ground. He was forced to eat one of his pool noodles, the blue one. 
Worst oh. part is, he didn't even make it. Just died with a rusted stomach full of his friends. Uh. Oh, that sounds horrible. Makes me think. If the TVT hosts found themselves in a shipwreck situation, who would be the first to be eaten? And who would be the first to eat? Could you mi- could you meet St. Peter with a belly full of Swanson? <laughs> don't no. get lost out there. Well, uh, Swanson... well, I don't think any of us are worried about meeting St. Peter. We all Swanson... know where we're going. Yes, and Swanson naturally gravitates toward leadership in times of crisis, I think. So I would so... probably eat Stairmaster. Yeah, he would be the last to be eaten. Swanson. I think what I think what we would do is we would sit down and discuss this as a rational group of people, and then uh, when your backs are turned, I'll just murder both of you. I think it's dinner. more likely the crab would kill us. Why would well, we take the presumably crab? The crab sea? Yeah, presumably the crab wouldn't be there. It's just said the host. Oh, I assume that the crab is like an integral part of the TV Tuners team. I mean, of if course, we'd be going on ship vacation with us. If there was a crisis out at sea, the crab could just go into the ocean. Well, I think the crab would just kill us at a grudge. Why hasn't the crab already done so? Uh, because we're always recording when we're in the studio, so the t- crab doesn't want us, you know, putting the crime on record. Well, Stero, I do want to mention that we do sort of live in the studio currently, as it is like half of a set to a house. No, oh, we have a hot mic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we're sort of recording everything. It's like a... Uh, it's like a Big Brother situation. <laughs> it's like a Truman Show situation. Except in, instead of um, instead of it being an entertaining, fun thing, I'm just recording you guys in case you say something uh, racist that I can cancel you guys over later. Mm. You mean like that time I read that Lovecraft poem? Yeah, I was I was laughing like, oh, what a crazy poem!" But I was secretly like seething about it. Wow, it's a crazy poem because he doesn't he he saves the N word for like the very last word of the poem. So he, just well, like, he knows, yeah, he knows how to keep the audience guessing. That's a, he's a true master of his craft. Well, I guess it's also in the title, but. Um. So yeah, I hope that uh, I hope that gets your question out of the way there, Geo. I hope you get that settled. And uh, it's a shame to hear about Pull Noodle Frank. Good guy. Rest in peace. Re- yeah, real trooper that guy. So yeah, if you have any, qu- if you have any. Uh, Emails like that, send them to us at tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. That's tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. So, yeah, uh, with all that out of the way, um, you guys want to get into the uh, the rabble this week? Mayhaps. Yeah. See what the see what the rabble said about the this show? Yes. What is this show we watched? Well, yeah, we watched Lovecraft Country, and I think the only way to describe it is see how other people described it. I would describe it as the real monster is racism, but also there's real monsters. Ooh. Ah, real monsters. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, so who wants to go first? I will. So Ooh, Okay. So uh, we broke rank here a tiny bit this week where... Uh, previously, we would have one positive review, one negative review, and then Swanson would do the critic reviews. Ooh. This week, we're going to do a little different. We're going to do a racist review. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. As well as a negative review, and then Swanson's going to be doing uh, critics. So no, the the tone of this review does not reflect the tone, the <laughs> beliefs of TV tuners, or at least Swanson and Keo. Now, shockingly, I couldn't find anything like overtly racist in the IMDb reviews. Um, that is actually legitimately shocking. The reason I, I assume is because there's just no way to be racist on IMDb. <laughs> no, to like <laughs> defend the 1950s. Was this said in the 1950s? Yeah, this Jim Crow yeah. era America. Yeah, so there's no way to defend it. So they have to be kind of roundabout about it. So, here's my review. It's a 1 out of 10, and the title of the review is simply Bad. (laughs) Alright, gets to the point. And this is written by Pyramid Argent. Ooh, that sounds like someone from a Lovecraft novel. Yeah. Yeah, it's not not Pyramid, it's it's like P-I, whatever. Anyways, the review says, it doesn't have anything to do with Lovecraft. It is political in every second. Says something about racism every five minutes. The special effects are bad. All white characters are villains. 
I wonder how the media would react if people of color would be villains in every episode of a show. Yeah. Hmm. What you think Something about? to think about. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just wonder uh, why that's hypothetical because uh, isn't that how it kind of was for a period of time? Like when, before this when show anybody... was coming out. Do you have any proof yeah. to back that up? That the nineteen um, fifties I mean, I... actually happened. Oh yeah. Hmm. You know, it's not. You you got me. You just wrecked me with facts and logic. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's all about, baby. Snare, you just came back from listening to Ben Shapiro, right? Yes. <laughs> and I got a review from him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On his secret account, Eric Geland, with a review titled "A Disappointment," one out of ten stars. Warning: spoilers. Lovecraft Country got rave reviews based on the first five episodes in the press where I live, so I was fairly excited about the show, even though I rarely trust professional reviewers. And <laughs> oh a boy, great sign. was this a reminder of why. The acting is good, and the characters are likable, albeit one-dimensional. I'm getting pretty damn bored with the American fixation on parental issues as a drama engine, and Lovecraft Country prov- proves to be no exception. The camera work is good, the scenery is splendid, and the portrayal of Southside Chicago in the late 50s feels very unauthentic. Until the immersion is torn away by the director's decision to use modern hip-hop as a musical backdrop in one of these games. <laughs> <laughs> like, why? What does that achieve? <sighs> and then he whines about it not being connected to Lovecraft enough. I can only hope this show gets better, but I'm doubtful. 143 out of 261 found this helpful. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's some big numbers. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a 1 out of 10. It sounded like he was actually having a good time. Until yeah, one that sounds more like, a, like a 5 out of 10. <laughs> I, I'm genuinely baffled at that. Uh, so I think this might be a man over the age of 45. They seem to be very afraid of rap music for some reason. Also, is it a distinctly American fascination with parents? I feel like that's sort of a worldwide thing. Well, in the Eastern Bloc, they had more of a communal style of child raising. Yeah, but there's still you know, stories that's... based around parents. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the vast majority of people worldwide uh, have had parents at some point. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I would ha- bold I, take. That, is, that might be true. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think parental that. drama is kind of like a, I, I want to say it's a universal thing that I think most people actually deal with, and saying that it's a fictional thing is very silly. Um, another thing that I want to think about here um, is that the previous review that Keo read said that it was political at all <laughs> moments. <laughs> all moments? Or you yeah. just think that like black people being on screen is inherently a political statement. The political statement is that black people should be treated with respect and dignity. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's it's like they're, they're talking about family drama and they're like, wow, how political <laughs> to believe that black people have families. Yeah. Um, those are some great reviews, guys. Uh, um, and by great, I mean uh, terrible. Awful. But I have uh, I have some some critical reviews. Oh, from, from professionals who know what they're talking about. That's right. At least according to Rotten Tomatoes, these people are professionals. Mm, um, who did you this choose? This first one, this first one is a positive review from Vern Gay at Newsday. Ooh, <laughs> I like the oh. rhymes. Yeah, I also separated Newsday, even though it's a one word thing. News um, stuff. To- oh, you're a true showman, Swanson. Yeah, some would say I'm the greatest showman. Um, To call Lovecraft Country wildly original seems almost a quaint understatement, but it is wild and original. Little doubt about that. Uh, And, yeah, I guess that's... This is pretty positive, I guess. It's got a 3.5 out of 4, so... Yeah, I mean... I, I don't know. We haven't really watched... That much of it, we watched the first episode, of course, and uh, uh. I I don't know. Is it original, guys, so far? It ah. seems like. I mean, I, I don't know go. how many other shows have Jackie Robinson cleaving Cthulhu in half. I didn't go, oh, this is hackneyed. So I guess yeah. it's original. <laughs> uh, and now I have a, uh, a negative review from Armand White of the National Review. Ooh, this is a famous name for some of you out there. Yes, yeah, so Swanson, um, 
before we started recording, you had you were mumbling this name to yourself. Can you explain? Armand White. What? Armand White. Armand <laughs> White. Uh, he's a famous contrarian critic. Lovecraft Country links to literary racism for, for simply for fake topicality. Anti-American nihilism and hopeless racial cynicism give the show its gotcha. Mm. <laughs> that is that is a real statement that somebody wrote down and, to, and was satisfied with. Yeah, do you think it's anti-American to show people who are being persecuted and just want to, like, live their life? Well, yeah, it weakens America's position abroad, obviously. You're giving it to Xi Jinping. Yeah, this, this. Is, this is definitely written from the perspective of somebody who doesn't understand racism at all. Like, it's, it's like, really pathetic that this person thinks they're, <laughs> like, a professional reviewer. Yeah, um, I'm, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. It feels like, um, like a lot of his work seems to be just sort of built to, uh, make people talk about him. So yeah, I guess like it worked just, on our, on our show. Just, just trying to get attention. So what we're saying is we should just ignore this, this hack and yes. move on. <laughs> yes. Um, I doubt he's going to like listen and care, but you know, Hey, if he does eh, good on him. Bad on him. No, good on him for giving us attention. Oh, well, only if he like tweets about us and says, "Look at these TV, yeah. the, the TV tuners boys." The, the red is again. The TV tuners boys are the nadir of podcasting. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's it for the rabble. So, what'd you guys watch this week? Anything fun? Interesting. Uh, I wa- I was I got really high and watched Thunderbolt Gundam December Sky, a one hour film released in twenty sixteen. Ooh, okay. What's going what's up with that? So it's like scoop it up people beat it up and then it's like war is bad and then it goes back to jazz soloing as a bunch of child soldiers get beat up, blown up. I would give it about nine out of ten stars. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Very positive. Yeah, you can watch it with only like a background understanding of Gundam. I think. Yeah, I love when you meta. describe something. When you describe something that doesn't sound very good, and then you just say it's nine out of ten. It's like uh, like a distillation of Gundam back down to its purest essentials, and then directed by a guy who really liked Cowboy Bebop. Evidently, okay. Bethy Jazz. Yes. All right, that sounds cool. Yeah, this week I finished watching uh, something that. Uh, was a former episode of the show Dispatches from Elsewhere (laughs) Um, Which one was that again? (laughs) That was the one with like people are playing the game but we can't tell if the game is real or not I was thinking of that Uh, other one, the one that we couldn't make it through 40 minutes of, I couldn't make through That you couldn't make, yeah The the, one with the robot um, arm? (laughs) Uh, No, Dispatches from Elsewhere is pretty good Uh, It's got some good stuff going on there there's some great acting, particularly from uh, Andre Benjamin, Andre 3000 from you Outcast fans. He is now Andre 4000 as a result. That's of the right, because he's achieved acting prowess. <laughs> he's achieved the next level. Uh, the last two episodes kind of get meta in like a way that makes it a bit too much, but uh, it's still a really it's still a really good show. Also, kudos to the show for uh, I don't know if it's the first time someone can correct me if it is if it's not. But it's the first time that I can recall watching a show that has a uh, cis male and trans woman relationship, uh, like yes, portrayed that's the positively. One. They did it. First one. Representation. It's a good show. Ten out of ten. I wouldn't give it a ten out of ten though. But tune oh. in. <laughs> now, Swanson's like uh, unconfident in his ratings. Well, because I did also mention that the last two episodes were a little too meta, it's, uh, you know, but it's good stuff. Out of ten. All right, so uh, let's move on from that and get to uh, the news, huh? Oh, did something happen? Ooh, yeah, there's yes. been some things. Federal forces surrounded and executed. Oh, no, 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 back. Oh, no, 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 I'm talking about TV news, Stairmaster. Uh, yes, this would not on TV yet. No. no. Probably. <laughs> Probably never. Um, yeah. Netflix, uh, believe it or not, there are people in the world who don't have a Netflix subscription. Ooh. Yeah. Like me. 
And Netflix is trying to cater to those people by offering a uh, for free service called Ooh. located at netflix.com slash watch free. <laughs> right, so... I can type that right now. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Look it up. You get to watch the first 10 minutes. Uh, lost your way? Sorry, we can't find that page. You'll find lots to explore on the homepage. Error code NESES. Oh, yeah. You got to put a little dash in between watch and free. <laughs> Thanks. Watch some of our favorite shows and movies for free. So, Stranger yeah, the things. mini platform currently offers a few uh, full length films and episodes of hit series like Stranger Things. The Boss things. Baby. Boss Baby. <laughs> the TV series. Uh, when They See Us. Stuff mm-hmm. like that. The Two Popes. Yeah, that's on there, which I, I think is a thing. You can watch Bird Box. You know that movie that everyone was obsessed about a few years back? No. Now, uh, five years after an unseen ominous presence drives most of society to suicide, a survivor and her two children make a desperate bid to reach safety, explore more, yeah, explore more. Are you going to explore more, sir? No. Oh, okay. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any ads on this collection of stuff, but uh, it's sort of just a sneak peek of Netflix's original content to get you hooked. Yeah, um, pretty pretty smart. I don't know why that's yeah. not a thing. Already. Uh, evidently, all you can all you can actually do is check out the pilot episodes of the TV shows there. Uh, but those free movies are pretty nice. Ooh. Can't complain with that. You can watch Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston in Murder Mystery. Ooh. Do you think Adam Sandler killed someone? Um, no, he's film. probably not the one who killed someone. It's probably oh, like okay. David Spade or <laughs> Kevin James. Both of them teaming up to do one murder. Yeah, they're like in a big trench coat. <laughs> who's this friend? Really who, big trench coat. Who's, the, who's yeah. the friend who does all the racist characters? Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider, he did it. No, yeah, maybe, probably. And for some reason, he's also got a foot fetish in this film. <laughs> because that's for funny. For some reason. Yeah, for some reason that we'll never quite understand. Um, now, the current lineup isn't permanent because the FAQ at the bottom of the page notes that selections may change from time to time. Ooh. But, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good promotional tool from Netflix here. Pretty good idea. Yeah, so if you're looking for something to watch, maybe check check that out. It's free. Yeah, it's, hey, you can't beat free. That's why everyone's going to Peacock right now. <laughs> With that out of the way, let's get to HBO Max, a competitor of Peacock, even. Uh, we recently talked about how HBO Max was interested in a Fresh Prince dramatic reboot. Uh, well, now the company that has the exclusive streaming rights to the titular prince and his freshness uh, is is trying to put together a reunion for the cast. Ooh. Featuring all of the people who aren't uh, Uncle Phil <laughs> or the original Aunt Viv. Ooh. Oh, no, she doesn't get to be there. They're no, she has like a there's like a very like long history of her and Will Smith having like issues. Oh, but it's come on. That's why she got it's replaced. 20, it's 2020. Get over no. yourself, Will. Well, I think yeah, I don't know. It seems like they both have like a lot of issues that they have to sort out between oh, each other in you terms hate of to see it. What what did, what what happened? What did they what did Will Smith do? For this conflict to have occurred. Uh, I don't remember the exact details here. It's sort of like... It feels like each week we're getting into something where I'm revealing like secret TV details that you guys haven't heard of before. <laughs> yeah, that's why people tune in. Um, I think it had something to do with her getting pregnant. Oh, um, yeah. And apparently there was something with that. Uh, even though they wrote that into the character. According to Will Smith, the show star, he and Hubert had difficulties working together for a long time before her pregnancy. Hmm. Yeah, something to think about. Mm, very interesting. Take a second. Think about that. But yeah, so obviously everyone else is still there, including DJ Jazzy Jeff. <laughs> He'll be there. Uh, also, conspicuously absent, the kid who played uh, Nikki <laughs> will not be there. <laughs> Presumably so because he has exactly, other stuff to do. What exactly is a reunion? Are there just going to be like 
in a room, like at a round table, discussing their feelings, or are they going to be like? I assume they're going to be like. There will be a portrait of uh, Uncle Phil, and they'll all form a circle around it, light candles. Oh, and bring them back. Oh, the seance. I just meant. I just meant Warren, but okay. (laughs) Oh, you're saying they're going to have a very late. Like funeral for. Hey, if you can get <laughs> if you can have multiple after. weddings, why not multiple funerals? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Think about that. How about four funerals in a wedding? <laughs> <laughs> Something oh my to God. think about. I would watch that film. That sounds like a no, very really interesting though, series of events. <laughs> what exactly is a reunion? Once and explain this yes, to me, explain. please. Okay, so this reunion is going to be like the Friends reunion. Where it's all these people sort of sitting up on stage being like, remember that time? That was good times. And we're going to be wow. like politely clapping. Being like, I so remember those basically- times. They were good times. And Will Smith will be like, damn, Jazzy, you can fly. And everyone will yeah. laugh. And there'll be polite applause. All right, so over under on this being worth watching. No. Anyway. No. <laughs> especially, especially if Uncle Phil's not there. Yeah, or unfortunately, he's, he's, he's been dead for almost a decade now. Yeah. I'm picturing a scenario where, like, they have, like, a, a Ouija board up front. <laughs> and then, like, they're they're trying to summon the spirit of Uncle uh, Phil. That seems more like an on cinema. As there's, like, uh, ominous cuts to the Ouija board as, like, all of the cast moves <laughs> the symbol. Alfonso Ribeiro's eyes roll back to the back of yeah, his Yeah, and then he starts dancing. <laughs> What if uh, an unseen force thrusts uh, Jazz out of the room? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That would be, you know what? That would make me watch this. Yeah. They would be like, you have to watch this Fresh Prince reunion special. <laughs> okay, but what if he's like thrown into a pit by the unseen force? Like, an, en- like an endless pit? Like, no, like I think like a Mortal Kombat spike pit at the bottom. Uh, that'd also be good. I'd laugh. <laughs> So you're saying you would just watch like an actual man die? Well, only if a ghost kills entertainment. him. Yeah, if, if <laughs> Will Smith did it, I'd be like, "That's horrible." <laughs> would you watch it though? Yes, of course. <laughs> well, he wouldn't enjoy it. The special is quoted as having music, dancing, and special surprise guests. Ooh, ooh, Keanu Reeves. I really love Fresh Prince. <laughs> And that's all he's he says, a- and he just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's there to kill uh, Jazzy Jeff. What, 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 what if he came in and just said, "Thank you, William." <laughs> <laughs> thank you, he, thank you for letting me have that role on the Matrix. And he would just he would just stand there the whole time, but not say anything else. <laughs> yeah. Um, the show is apparently being taped on September on September 10th, and will be released Ooh. at some point near Thanksgiving. Oh, so not September 11th. I, no, I don't think they're going to release it the next day. Um, okay, I have a question. Do you think The Matrix would have been better if Will Smith had taken the role of Neo? No. It would be awful. <laughs> okay, but think... uh, Ke- Keo and Stare can answer this question. Both, maybe at the same time. Don't do it at the same time. Um, do you think Keanu Reeves could have pulled off the lead role of Men in Black? Uh, it would be a very different film. I've never seen um, Keanu Reeves play like. Uh, I, I, is, he, is Will Smith the straight man? And he's not really. He's like the goofy he's man. Got, also, he's a straight man, but he's got a sense of humor about things. That's yeah, why he, it he's works. like a goofy straight man. No, Tommy yeah. Lee Jones is the straight man in that movie. Yeah, but Will Smith is also kind of reasonable. He's just a uh, wide Alec. I More guess. than goofy. Like, he, right. So he, he makes quips, but also he's. He's reacting to things that are actually legitimately crazy, and the joke is that the the, the other guy, I don't know his name, he's like real serious, but the situation's wacky, so it's 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 weird. Yeah, I don't know if Keanu Reeves has the uh, the will the, the the ability to do that. Yes. Yeah, he, he he could play the other guy though for sure. Well, I I feel like the other guy has to be older <laughs> to uh-huh. make the ending make sense, and he has to be Tommy Lee Jones because he's yes. a good actor. <laughs> now, what if they had replaced Will Smith with Keanu Reeves for Men in Black 2? <laughs> That'd be fun, I think. Would it make would less intrigued. sense? <laughs> oh, the same character, but he's now played by...
Yeah, he's just played by Keanu Reeves. All right, well, uh, that's it for the news. Man, we're just breezing through this episode, guys. Yeah. Uh, We're breezing so fast, in fact, that I think it's time for us to take a quick smoke break. And while we're taking that, why don't you all enjoy this ad? (laughs) Hey, Keo, how's it going? Oh, I'm having a great day. Yeah, Keo, would you say you're winning? Yeah, because winning season returns at my bookie. Winning season? What's that? Swanson, winning season means doubling your first deposit. Oh, tell me more. What else does it mean? (laughs) Winning season means survivor, super contests, and squares. Wow. At my bookie, it's time to celebrate the NFL season. Whoa, is that what winning season means? Hey, sign up now. Hey, what are oh. you guys doing in here? Hey. Um, oh. oh. Hey, uh, how's it going? What's up? Hey, buddy. Where Nothing. Are these we're candles? just uh Yeah, we're just having a good old um hanging out time here. We're not doing anything. What are you bad? But but you're reading from just, something. Is that a, is that yeah. an ancient scroll? No. Well, s- s- stare. Li- What's this portrait of John stare. Madden doing here? S- stare. Listen. Okay, listen. So we're sponsored what? by my bookie. Oh, and you mean the number one gambling site for all sports that, bets? That's right. And we are currently summoning the bookie himself. <gasps> that's right. Because if we summon the bookie now and sign up, we get our first deposit. We can make our first deposit and get a dollar for dollar match all the way up to a thousand dollars. Stare. Wow. Do we have a promo code? Yes. Yeah. You can Ooh. use promo code TV Tuners and double your first deposit now. I think I'm- look at look, Sarah. We can also grab ourselves a free entry into the famed My Bookie Super Contest. Whoa! It's famed. What's this, what's it about? Look, it's a, con- <laughs> it's a contest. This. What do you mean? What's it about? <laughs> okay. <laughs> to play in the contest, all you have to do is pick five NFL teams against the spread to have a chance at get this one hundred thousand dollars guaranteed in cash wow! prizes. What's the spread? Wow. <laughs> it's like the people who are betting positively oh so i just should bet that the denver broncos are gonna eat shit this year listen bookie's gonna tell us all about it when we when we summon them oh, and the best yeah, part is there there's thousands of bet to choose from when bookie gets here like wow. the full nfl slate the nba playoffs from live betting to championship futures every play we could make is waiting for us wow that sounds exciting i'm, I'm gonna spend all my money on this oh well that's what i was that's kind of what I was afraid of, Stare. Oh, is that Stare, why you bought at the store? Listen, we, we don't exactly trust you to bet responsibly. So uh, we do trust our viewers to bet responsibly at MyBookie using the promo code TVTuners to, to double the first deposit. That's right. Listen, it's a no-brainer. Hey, look, it's simple. You just make your picks, you win big, you collect cash, and you summon Bookie. Ooh. Your winning season can begin today only at MyBookie. Now let's get to summoning, guys. Oh, God. He comes. He comes. No! MyBookie.com <laughs> What great ad. So, yeah. Welcome. We're hanging out in the Cash Dome. <laughs> Money Town, USA. Yeah. We just got stacks, fat stacks of cash that we're hanging out, mm-hmm. occupying our time with. And, uh, you know, it's time for a segment that's near and dear to everybody's hearts. It's Ooh. Guess Who's Coming. Hit the theme, Stairmaster. Ooh, sounds like Thunderbolt Gundam. <laughs> That's right. Welcome to Guess Who's Coming, a monthly feature on the pod where I give my co-hosts here, Stairmaster and Keo Rain, the name of an upcoming television show this month, and they try to guess what the premise is. Mm-hmm. And we do, I do badly. Well, I think everyone usually does pretty badly on this. Um, the, that's it's impossible. The, yeah, that's the humor in the situation. Oh, um, this is all joke. <laughs> that's right. Life is one big joke, Stare. Oh, I was taking this deathly seriously every time. Now I'm going to have fun with it. Yeah, and there's a big cash prize if you get Ooh. the if you get everything right. One hundred thousand dollars. That's that's right. Um, all right, so let's go with the first one. This is from HBO. Uh, there's no real uh, network 
look, networks are kind of in a problem right now with the pandemic and whatnot. So there's not a whole lot of network shows to discuss. So we're just going to dive right into HBO with their show, Coastal Elite. Um, okay. Um, do you want to go first there? Okay, so this is about... There's like this... Like this professional middle class lady living on the coast. It could be the east or the west coast. And she's just trying to find love. But she's been legally shackled to a Trump supporting conservative for the next six months as part of a legal sentence. So now they're going to have to make that work. But maybe, maybe they'll find love along the way. Hmm, okay. All right. So Coastal Elites is about, hmm, I need to pick a coast. The Gulf um, Coast. <laughs> no. Oh. Not the Gulf Coast. I'm sorry. There's no elites on the Gulf Coast. What about the oil barons? <laughs> oh, maybe. Hmm. I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to say that they're on the West Coast, Swanson. Ah, uh, surf's up, baby. Yeah, so that there there's a team <laughs> There's a team of of, of elites mm-hmm. on the West Coast. And you know they're they're like, like a like a not very diverse group of <laughs> mostly men in suits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I don't know. They're they're like uh, they're like spies maybe. Mm, okay. <laughs> and they they do like beach related espionage investigations. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, espionage and investigations like beach related though, and they're also rich. oh, so this is just terriers. Except they're rich. Yeah, so not terriers. <laughs> yeah, so like a completely different premise almost. Oh, they go to the beach a lot in terriers. <laughs> but they're very notably not rich at all. Yeah. Also, the beach when they're at the beaches that they're at in terriers are always like glum and sort of depressing. <laughs> well, Kia didn't say whether these beaches were nice or not, just that they're doing espionage on them. Mm, okay. Well, you can kind of infer that they're nice beaches because they're rich. <laughs> Yeah, the rich people have nice things. Fact. Nope. Is that so, your full premise, Kia? Um, I don't think I can add anything else. Well, what's the mid-season <laughs> twist that shakes everything up? Um, the like the the fifth guy in the squad, guy number five, is actually not rich. <laughs> oh, <Okay. laughs> interesting. Uh, I I can't wait to see how that plays out. I can't wait till they beat him up. <laughs> Coastal Elite is a socially distanced comedic satire that spotlights five characters breaking down and what? breaking through as they grapple with politics, <laughs> culture, and the pandemic. This uh... special presentation explores our current world of deeply divided politics and the universal pursuit of human connection. When the shutdown forces these distinct and impassioned people with varying points of view Wait. across the United States to cope in isolation, they react with frustration, hilarity, and introspection. We were already getting COVID TV shows now. There's no love to be found? Um, I mean, maybe there's love to be found. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Keo, it's been, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but it's been most of the year that this has been happening. Six months is long enough okay. to make a TV show. I guess. Shad. Sh- yes, Shad. Oh, sad. <laughs> I don't uh, know why I said it like that. Okay, but Swanson, did you say the word five? Yes. I did, actually. Oh. Well, he said the number. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a number and a word. Ooh. It was technically, uh, as listed here, a word. Um, is that your is that what your point is here, Keo? Because I'm pretty sure Stairmaster got the point on this one. Uh, interesting. Wait, what, I didn't think what that. was Stairmaster's premise? Mine was about two people being shackled in there. Legally yeah, shackled I mean, you together. just got two people. These people are shackled together, apparently. For some reason, how are they shackled? I thought they were like, like isolated. Yeah, like they're isolated. By... All right, fine. Keo gets the points there. You happy? <laughs> uh, sort of. Justice has been done. That's a bit satisfactory in my book. <laughs> All right, there you go, Keo. How's it feel? You got one point. Yeah, I can't believe I guessed the number five. I was thinking of Five Guys Burgers again. By the way, for the record, I went to Five yeah, Guys. You're always, this week. you're always thinking about that. <laughs> I don't even eat there like Sarah does. Oh, well, you have eaten there before, right? 
Oh yeah, they're not um, on the West Coast, are they? No, he's they eaten are, there but I well, they, I go eat I there like, again. I didn't like it that much last time I went, so just just do it. Why would I go out of my way to get fast food that I don't even like? It's a good burger and fries for you. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, Stair, let me reiterate. I went to Five Guys, right? Yes. I got the burger, right? Mm. I ate the burger. Yes. Okay. And I was like, oh, that was all right. Fuck I'm you. I'm probably not going to eat there again. <laughs> wow, Stair gets real defensive about his uh, chains of choice. Yeah, but the fries were good, right? And also, another thing to talk about is that fast food, like eating out, is actually expensive. Yes. Mm, very so true. Best I wishes. It. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get to this next uh, HBO show here. The Third Day. Okay. Ooh, The Third Day. Okay, so on the first day, God made outer space. <laughs> That's right. On the second day, he made the ocean. On the third day, he made land. So this is about, like, age of exploration. <laughs> Some European explorers find a new land, but not all as it seems. And there'll be a supernatural mystery. Maybe there's a big worm that's eating people. Oh, okay. Maybe there's like fish people who worship Satan. Who knows? One of those two. It could be both. Are you saying there's just only one of those? Uh, well, I don't think they could fit both in. That'd be like a Spider-Man 3 type situation. <laughs> or a Spider-Man 4. <laughs> and I can't believe Stairmaster studied up on the book of Genesis and understands what the <laughs> days were. Yeah. Uh, what's actually, your what's your pick here, Kyo? I am actually an ordained priest. So, um, I'm going to take Stair's word for it and say that the third day is um, has to do with like, you know, the land being made. So, so at that point in the story, though, there was no people yet, right? No yeah, it's just, it's just going to be shot to land. <laughs> yeah. So, this, so this is going to be like like uh, an HBO geography. <laughs> This is a yeah. this is a peninsula. <laughs> this is, is going to be like an HBO HBO geography program. <laughs> okay, where where they're, they're going to be like showing off like some I don't know, like maybe they're going to be speculating on what the land masses look like. Like this is the <laughs> welcome to Mesopotamia. <laughs> oh, so it's a documentary about the Book of Genesis times. Yeah, except it's an actual geography. Yeah, program. it's before Adam and Eve were there. Oh, I I don't know why they they would frame it b- biblically, but whatever. <laughs> That's my premise, Swanson. I can't think of anything else. You gotta hook the Christian viewers. Okay, so the, the Christian they're gonna HBO like the, subscribers. They're, yeah, yeah. So they're okay. Here, let me add one more thing. Then so they're gonna hook the Christians by like pointing out to some landmass and saying like. Yeah, that's the Holy Land. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. So, um, here's the third day. The show is divided into two parts, summer and winter. In uh, summer, one man visits a mysterious island off the British coast and discovers a group of inhabitants intent on <gasps> preserving their home at any cost. Wow. In the second half, a.k.a. winter, a strong-willed outsider comes to the island seeking answers, but instead causes a battle to decide its fate. Wow, that sounds more like mine than Keo's. By having it does, people in it. <laughs> yours has people in it. And they are That's going about. to an island, and stuff is happening as a result. Yeah, Keo made a real bold gambit by <laughs> suggesting that no people would be on a show. <laughs> Look, I'm being biblically accurate to the timeline of the book of Genesis. Yeah, and that's what happens when you get biblically, biblically accurate. You lose. Point goes to <laughs> stare. All right. Okay. Now we're entering the world of streaming. With this uh, Hulu original, Woke. Oh, God. Oh, no. Okay, so it's about this late. Why do I always go first? Well, you, 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 the ideas are rushing to your head. You're giving me time to think of mine. I oh, guess. yeah, that's probably a good reason. <laughs> okay, so this is like a murder mystery. Like, this lady loves to social justice post on Twitter, but then she gives an old man a heart attack. 
by saying he's canceled. <laughs> um, and now she has to prove her innocence. <laughs> and also Hillary Clinton okay. will make a cameo appearance. Oh my god. Uh oh. <laughs> Alright, so um Stairs on the right track with this one, but I have a better idea. Probably. So this is the sympathetic story of a cancelled man. Oh, oh no. Who's <laughs> Cancelled for saying black people aren't real. Yeah, he said something about black people probably. Like like he, he said that like black people are oh, three hundred feet tall. He was like an SNL writer who made an ill timed joke about colored people time. Okay, I'm gonna just strike that from the record. <laughs> this is Stairmaster influencing my idea, like jumping in in the sorry, middle of it sorry. when I was very polite with him. Yeah, political tampering by Stairmaster. Goldman. Yeah. So um, the actual premise, though, is there's a is, a, is there's a man probably probably a man right who got canceled, and the show's about him like like grappling with being canceled, and it's like a redemption arc where uh, <laughs> he gets un- officially uncanceled by Twitter. Did, did they do that? <laughs> like Twitter, like <laughs> like the big like the big bosses at Twitter like come on and they're like he has been uncanceled. <laughs> Yeah, they have like a little the, I, Maoist struggle session where all the champions of Twitter get fiscal, the horse whisperer. I, I'm picturing, though, like the last episode and season eight, which this is all resolved. Um, yeah, there's the a, dog reviews a, guys a, pardons him. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking there's like a trending hashtag saying like, hashtag guy's name uncanceled. <laughs> and, <laughs> And the, the the last shot is like showing the hashtag on the Twitter page reflecting off of his eye, <laughs> and like he's like crying. It's, not, oh, it's wow. sort of like uncut gems. That was a yeah. shot, close up shot of his sunglasses. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Uh, Woke takes an absurdly irreverent look at, at identity and culture as it follows Keith. An African American <laughs> cartoonist follow up finally on the verge of mainstream success when an unexpected incident changes everything. With a fresh outlook on the world around him, Keith must now navigate the new voices and ideas that confront and challenge him, all without setting aflame everything he's already built. Oh, so he developed schizophrenia from posting too much. That's what they're saying. Does that happen? <laughs> yes. We're <laughs> all a little a... mad here we're all a little mad here, Swanson. Yeah. Um, similar to how Keo won the first one, basically by saying the number five, I think he wins this one only by saying that it was a man. <laughs> yeah. I think that sounds kind of like he could have been canceled, and that's what he was navigating, or at risk of being canceled. Yeah, possible. That's possible. They they are playing real coy with what happened to this guy, so I'm yeah. assuming it's like a big reveal in the pile in the pilot or something. Some probably some kind of crazy controversy, right? It has to be. Um, I'm assuming. Um, all right, so that's a point for Keo Stairmaster. Yes. You must survive. Oh, okay. I was really hoping I'd die. This is an HBO Max series here titled "Raised by Wolves." Ooh. Hmm. HBO Max. I I, I don't have a grip on what that is. All right, so this is like a sports drama. About this guy who's like came of age because his parents and like all the authority figures in his life were related to the sports team called the Wolves. <laughs> okay. And now he's got to be coach of the team. Or maybe he's an orphan competing in the Wolves. One of those two. I love when Snare gives me two premises for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that cheating, Swanson? Um, I'll allow it. <laughs> yes. I guess I, they must be both really off for him to do that. <laughs> okay, so um, here's my premise. So um, this is a this is a spinoff of Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I think that is an HBO Max. I think you can watch that on HBO Max. So wow, I, I did it. So this is a spinoff of Wolf of Wall Street where. Um, the Wolf of Wall Street, um, he he gets married to another Wolf of Wall Street, 
I'm assuming he survives the movie, so he's able to live on and have kids after it. I never saw the movie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's... uh, uh, Here's the thing with people from Wall Street, Keo. They usually win. (laughs) Okay, good. I I thought, like, he did, like, some drugs and may have died or something. I don't know. No, he's still alive, I'm pretty sure, and not in jail. Okay, good. My premise works. So, he, he has, um... He has kids. Big, big, big shameful thing here. He has kids, and um, so these two like heartless, cutthroat business people are raising kids, Ooh. and it's really depressing. Okay, <laughs> this does sound like it could be a show. I will admit that. <laughs> um. All right. Let's see. <laughs> let's see how close you guys got. Raised by Wolves centers on uh, from executive producer Ridley Scott. Raised by Wolves centers on two androids tasked with raising human children on a mysterious planet. As the burgeoning okay, colony I... of humans threatens to be torn apart by religious differences, the androids learn that controlling the beliefs of humans is a treacherous and difficult task. Mm, I, uh, I do want yeah. to say that sports teams basically are a modern religion. I do want to say that, like, Wall Street people are basically robots. Mm. No, a robot wouldn't be capable of that much pure evil. It would have to learn it. Um, it's not ev- It's not pure evil though. It's, it's, it's like pure. It's pure opportunism yes. though. Like just trying to make the most amount of money possible. That's that's like a ro- robotic function. <laughs> hmm. They're just like getting the most out of the system that they're inside of. All right, Kia's making a pretty good point here. Stare, you got any retorts? Uh, a spaceship is like a football that goes across the field. And space colonization is when you get through the goalpost. Okay, well, how are the uh, sports parents robots? Fuck. <laughs> Next <Yeah>. TV show. <laughs> All right, well, I guess, uh, I guess Keo gets the point. Uh, yeah, so this last one here, Keo's pretty much already a shoo-in to win, but we'll just play for fun, this last one. Uh, this okay. Netflix, back old, back an old, stable, old, reliable Netflix, for this last one, Ratchet. Ratchet. If, you, if you want me to spell okay. that, I will. Is that the nurse from that movie? Is that the mm, little no. cartoon animal guy? Whose friends it are is, playing? That's Ratatouille, I think. No, no, no. From the PlayStation. You mean Ratchet and Clank? Yes. No, it's uh, it is it is spelled like R A T C H E D. No T, no T at the end. Just a, it's Ratchet. Okay, this is probably not about Daniel Radcliffe, even though it kind of does sound a little bit like that. You can expand on that. That's my entire thought. Okay, that wasn't your premise, though. No, no, no. This is a tough one. Since that's not a word, as far as I can tell. Yeah, it's it's a name. I I, I got this one. Oh, okay, good. Unless unless it's like some kind of like, it's got to be the nurse from uh, what was it called? Over the cuckoo's nest. Oh God! Are you making a premise prediction right now, Keo? Yeah, yeah, it's about that nurse, basically. But I'm now assuming. she fucks. <laughs> okay. So, wait, what network is this? Is HBO right? This is Netflix. This is Netflix. Oh, well, she'll kind of fuck, but it won't be that cool. Um, well, she, I'm pretty sure she's evil, so she's oh, probably so going to she's be like, like some a, unet- She's like a dummy mommy. Have you not watched <laughs> One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest there? She's like no. the uh, she's like the epitomization of the establishment in that movie. No, I've never seen that film. Sorry. She also lobotomizes, spoilers, I guess, Jack Nicholson. Oh, no. And that's how he became Drill? Yes. <laughs> What's your uh, what's yeah, your prediction so for this, Star? Oh, yeah, I guess that Are was my done? premise. Oh, do you want you have more stuff was, to add, Kyo? Do you want to keep going, sweetie? Oh, oh. Well, I was just gonna say, like, it's just like I'm guessing it's gonna be like a horror show, right? Um, like it's about her. I guess it must be if you're focusing on the villain. Yeah. Um. Why would it be titled after her if it's not about her? Yeah, that'd be weird. Yeah. So. It's it's either going to be a horror show about her, or it's a horror show where she's like the main villain, one of the two. I think this is a British. This is a show about a British lady because that's a bullshit name, like all English <laughs> names. And she's like a gardener or something, and she's single and dating. 
Ooh, okay. Is that the end of that? Yes. Um, also, she lives in Newcastle. This this might be a first in the history of this because Keo got it right on the nail. Oh, no. <laughs> Ratchet is a suspenseful drama series that tells the origin story of asylum nurse Mildred Ratchet. In 1947, uh, Mildred arrives in Northern California to seek employment at a leading psycho- a psychiatric hospital where new and unsettling experiments have begun on the human mind. Oh. On a clandestine mission, Mildred presents herself as the perfect image of what a dedicated nurse should be, but the wheels are always turning, and as she begins to infiltrate the mental health care system and those within it, Mildred's stylish exterior belies a growing darkness that has long Ooh. been smoldering within. Whatever, we all know this game is bullshit anyways. <laughs> <laughs> You're mad that I got it right? Keo guessed, because I knew- Keo guessed it based solely off the name. I didn't even know Keo knew one flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> Yeah, Q's a smart lad. Yeah. Um, you made, you made, made a fatal error there in assuming I didn't know about a movie a famous or whatever. Movie I, I, I think is it was it was it a book first or was it, it was a, a book movie first? first? I don't That's even... why Keo knows okay. it. Uh, fun fact about that book: it was um, the writer of the book was was inspired to make it when he was working at a mental ward while on LSD. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Interesting. Um, anyway, uh, so this you... show um, is by everyone's favorite producer, Ryan Murphy, who made Hollywood Ooh. an American horror story. And this sounds like um, bad. First well, off, I'm, do we need I'm an origin tra- story of Nurse Ratched? Like, that well, sounds... Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe she's hot. Maybe the actress is hot. But yeah, Ooh. the other thing is that, like... I don't know what they mean by unsettling experiments have begun on the human mind. <laughs> I'm assuming well, they just begun. mean like lobotomies and stuff, but <laughs> Oh no, she's part of MK Ultra. Yeah, that makes sense. Um I, anyway. I mean it, it does it does actually sound somewhat interesting, I guess, but So stay tuned, what you're I, saying. I, doesn't doesn't really need to take this character though, does it? No, it could because th- you could just do this about anybody, right? It doesn't have to be the most infamous like bad nurse. Also, nobody likes one flew over the cuckoo's nest enough to get in on it just because of name recognition. That's a pretty good show or movie, rather. <laughs> but is it that good? Good. Yeah, it's that good. Yeah, it's it, it's a cultural milestone, Stairmaster. Yeah. People like it. But anyway, do people um, stand it? Is what I'm saying. Probably not, and they probably don't stand the nurse who was like. I mean, she is a scary character, yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, Keo, Keo, you win, and here's your uh, cash prize. Oh, it's one hundred thousand dollars. Wow, that's right. Now you know where to spend that, wait, don't you, Keo? Wait, wait, I have to go on my bookie, don't I? That's right. Yes. MyBookie.com. Use the promo code TV Tuners. Well, I'm sure to make my money back with this. No problem. I'll be responsible with my errant gambling. Yeah, I'm like Stairmaster. I'm currently homeless. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess technically, since we're all in Denver right now, we are all homeless. Since I, I don't know if you qualify where we record and live as a home, since it's only half of one. Yeah, I, I got a contractor to come take a look at it next week. Ooh. Oh, they're gonna are are they gonna do it live on the pod? Yeah, he's gonna be like hammering stuff probably. <laughs> okay, that sounds good for recording. He's, he's gonna bring his kid too. Oh. All right, because you know he's a he's a single father. <laughs> oh, and you know he can't really afford like a babysitter, and you know with uh, the whole pandemic going on, you know. It's hard. It's just it's hard. So he's gonna bring his son with him. It's a hard knock life. <laughs> yeah. So that means I'm sure. <laughs> um. All right. Well, that's been guess who's coming. Congratulations on winning Keo yet again. All right then. Uh, it's time for our main event. We watched the show, and now we're gonna talk about it. Lovecraft Country. That's right. Lovecraft Country follows Atticus Freeman as he joins up with his friend Letitia and his Uncle George to embark on a road trip across 1950s Jim Crow America in search of his missing father. 
This begins a struggle to survive and overcome both the racist terrors of white America and the terrifying monsters that could be ripped from a page of Lovecraft's novels. Mm. Yeah, so w- which is scarier, racism or uh, otherworldly monsters? Um, If this show is to be the judge, it's kind of a toss-up. But probably uh, the racism. In this show, personally, I will say that the racism is... A mixture of, like, almost comical and scarier than any monster I've seen. Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you think about it, we can't avoid, when we die, our souls being consumed by Azoth, the blind idiot sleeping god. But racism, nobody's forcing you to be racist. That's, That's true, yeah. I mean, except for capitalism. No, I think <laughs> even capitalism isn't really forcing you. Mm. Well, it's sort of like, yeah, that's cool. It just likes to profit off of it, yeah. <laughs> they have an arrangement. This thing so of we theirs. Get, um, yes, they have, yeah, they have a sort of uh, love-hate relationship between the two of them where they secretly love each other, but one has to act like it hates the other. Oh. Forbidden love It's a real so Romeo sweet. and Juliet situation, except for two things that everyone should hate. Yes, it's like a Hitler and Mussolini. I guess Mussolini is a woman in this scenario. I guess not. Right. <laughs> I, you know what? I'd read that. I'd read this alt history novel. I'd read this manga. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, we uh we open up here on what ends up being a dream sequence. Um, this is a pretty great opening, in my opinion. Uh, where we have what looks to be it seems like it's World War One, but it's definitely the it's Korean World War. War. Yes, it's either World War Two or the Korean War. Um, but uh, the we get our lead character Atticus in a sort of dreamscape here as a soldier running around doing soldier things, and then he climbs up over the trench to find like all of these like pulp, not like old pulp, like monsters just going around. Yeah, there's the aliens from like um the uh not the day the Earth stood still. What is it? War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. And there's John... <laughs> there's uh, some John Carter aliens and whatnot. There's Glovecraft stuff going around. Jackie Robinson shows up and knock and cleaves Cthulhu in half with his baseball bat. Yeah, and I mean... He's he's like a, he's like a one-punch individual. <laughs> he's like a metal bat type man. Yeah. And um, he cleaves Cthulhu in half and he's like... How's it going there, friend? I, it's me, Jackie Robinson. Mm-hmm. And then uh, yeah, and I'm like, oh, this is a dream. Okay, I get it now. Very small Cthulhu. Well, look, it's a dream, you know? <laughs> okay. Maybe you didn't think yeah, it's the actual yeah. Cthulhu is probably much bigger. Yes. yes. Stare, you, in your, when you're dreaming, you can't even remember faces properly. How are you going to contemplate the vastness of Cthulhu? You're right. <laughs> so, yeah, um... I'm just right off the bat. It's a pretty good opening because where else on TV are you going to find Jackie <laughs> Robinson fighting Cthulhu? Did you think he was going to win? Uh, it seemed very dire on his part. Uh, no. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's no way to win when a guy when a person can just sort of reform <laughs> when a person after being cleaved in in twain. Uh, he was cheerful and just kind of having fun with it. I think. Uh, okay. Because it was a dream, yeah. And then uh, Atticus. Freeman, our main character, wakes up back to the real racist world of the 1950s. He's in the back of the bus because, you know, it's the 1950s and whatnot. Um, there's a bit here where the bus breaks down and this uh, guy comes to bring the passengers. But- and there's not even a moment where it seems like he's going to ask if they can drive. He just assumes that that's not going to be the, pro- the issue at all. So he walks to Chicago mm-hmm. um, from wherever they were, uh, where his family is currently. Um, including his uncle George, who was played by the guy who played Johnny Cochran in American Crime Story, Courtney B. Vance. Wow. I knew I recognized him from somewhere. I knew yeah. I didn't recognize him from anywhere. Well, yeah, but you, you, you don't recognize most people. Fun fact, he doesn't appear in this episode, but Ooh. Michael K. Williams is uh, Atticus's father. What? That's a game changer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He, uh, I think you can briefly see him in one of the photos that Atticus is looking at, mm. but uh, I only know because I looked at the cast. Damn. Well, now I got to watch the rest of the show. Yeah, no it's pretty. That, 
And that's a that's tune in on need. that's a tune in on Lovecraft Country. Oh. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> all right. Wow, quick up. Um I mean, I don't know if it's all I need, but what I we'll we'll see. Um, it's it's a it's a nice it's nice to know that he's going to be like on this series because you know he's a good actor. Um, so yeah, Atticus hangs out, uh, makes his way to his uh, uncle's house. His uncle is bu- is busy, uh, getting busy. Oh yes, with his aunt, um, presumably, and traumatizing their daughter. I don't know if she's traumatized so much as she's just like, ugh, gross. She dis- she's disgusted by it, not really yeah, having to hear Abhorrent. it. Abhorrent. That is a true Lovecraftian horror, hearing your parents have sex. Have yeah. you experienced that? Yes. Ooh. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, it was a, that's a big yikes from me, fam. <laughs> just that sound, I can still hear it in my mind. I can't um, say for sure. If, actually, I can't say for sure that I have never experienced it. Oh. Um <laughs> I just, I can't say for sure if it would have been, like, a haunting experience, or if I would have just been like, ugh. <laughs> so, here's what I'm picturing Stairmaster Hurt through the walls. Oh, no! <laughs> it's not supposed to do that! <laughs> Close. Call the <an> ambulance! <laughs> Uh-oh, fire hazard! <laughs> what is this... Yeah. What if you, like, had heard your parents having sex, and then you heard the noise when Sonic drowns? <laughs> oh, no! I would have to investigate to make sure they hadn't died. How would a real death have that sound effect? Well, if I'm hearing it diegetically, like, in my reality, and not, like, this is on a speaker, I have to assume something happened, some sort of physical phenomenon has happened. So you would just rush in there. Are you? Yes. Ooh. Or you'd be really traumatized with that. Yeah. No one needs to see that. Yeah. So yeah. Um. He uh he goes to his uncle George's. Uh, what we find out is his uncle George is sort of a uh, pioneer of the Green Book, not the movie, the actual book. <laughs> uh, where it's like a travel guide for black people to make sure they don't get murdered. Oh. Uh, wow. Um. This is the height of civilization, right here. <laughs> Yeah, don't you want to go back to a time like this? Seems like no. a great, a good old day. Oh, you, you I mean, don't want to... Like it sounds like a grand adventure, but not the kind you'd want to actually embark on. Yes. Oh, getting chased around by racists in a car is not a, a grand adventure? It's like one that you would enjoy, Keo? Um, I think it would be a little stressful, to be honest with you. Yeah, it seems like it. Um... So yeah, uh, they they offhand mention Lovecraft because uh, Atticus is a fan of the pulp and the occult, mm-hmm. as we learn. Um, also, they immediately call out Lovecraft as a racist, so that's good. As if you weren't aware that a show that has a predominantly black cast is going to be doing that when it's called Lovecraft Country. I wonder if H.P. Lovecraft is going to show up. Yeah, he's the villain. <laughs> you don't know, maybe. It's possible. You know, this I is feel my like country. if this were like produced by Quentin Tarantino and not Jordan Peele, yes, I would think so. But well, also, we didn't talk about that, but Jordan Peele is a producer on this show, not necessarily the showrunner. Uh, that goes to Misha Green, who is a showrunner I haven't heard of before. But I mean, I could know, still see her. I could still see H.P. Lovecraft like being this undead abomination. Oh yeah, or like brain in a computer robot. It's cool to see the works of Key Peelson. Yes. Yeah, Key Peelson's doing good work here. Much better than the Twilight Zone, that's for sure. <laughs> um, apparently, Misha Green previously worked on uh, a series called Underground, which was about the Underground Railroad. Uh, and that would have been something I'm sure we heard of if it wasn't from 2016 and on WGN America. What? What? What's that? Uh, it's a uh, Chicago-based station that's oh. on, like, I think, like... 1,500, like 1,500,000 homes at most. 1,500,000 homes. That's like a million. Or 500,000 homes is what yes. I mean. <laughs> That would be a million and a half. Yeah, that would be a lot of homes. This is on less homes than that. Yeah, I think it would be... It's not in my home. Yeah, it was in my home before I moved to Denver. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not here in Denver. 
a shame. We're free. Um, anyway, um, so, yeah, she's here doing her first big-time role or uh, show-running job, I assume. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, this is a... Uh, they they realize that he's got... Um, Atticus mentions that he's got a letter from his dad, a strange one. They oh. mention that his dad's a drunk, so he's notorious for sending odd things but and this is like the oddest yeah this is the oddest because it mentions like his true inheritance <laughs> that's never a good sign no um so he um he mentions that the address they give him is in lovecraft country which he thinks is arkham but it's actually ardham massachusetts oh uh, because his dad is oh, a great okay writer <laughs> they had to use a um, microscope to figure this out yes um, so they, they set off to Ardham, Massachusetts, along with, um, Wait, you other character. Wait, you the unnecessary hip-hop! Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a montage of a block party where we get, uh, Atticus's lady friend established. Yeah, la, uh... Letitia? Letitia. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I was so surprised to see that review complaining about it because i didn't even notice it <laughs> yeah that's just background yeah, it's noise just for like, Keo. it's just an establishing shot it's not like <laughs> i guess like if you want to be like real nitpicky you can say it's not necessary for it to be like not in line with all the other music but it's whatever I mean, um, yeah so are, are we meant to take the music as diegetic then? <laughs> yes I guess, yeah. I mean, like, I guess we're meant to take the music that the actual people are literally playing and dancing to as diegetic, but that wasn't what was happening in that scene. No, this is the secret that they invented hip-hop back in the 50s, but just couldn't get it off the ground because of white Ooh, oppression. Yeah. It's like that movie Black Astronauts about the dudes who landed on the moon in the 50s. It got, like, I'm one so glad... sentence in the newspaper about it. So glad we're stepping towards our achievement of saying the word diegetic uh, multiple times. <laughs> we're media reviewers. We're yeah. scholars. That's a cinema sin. <laughs> um, you could drive a hole through that, let me tell you. A truck through that. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> drive a hole through that, Swanson. <laughs> Get a hole in that uh, bad boy. Swanson's mind is all about holes today. Yeah. Yeah, he's thinking about Swiss cheese. Oh. He's hungry. <laughs> I'm a hungry boy. I'm thinking about Holes, starring uh, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Dig 'em up, up holes. Dig 'em up, dig 'em up, dig 'em up those holes. That's how the song went. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I think you're right. So yeah, um, it's not quite. Lo- Artem is not quite Lovecraft country, but what we learn later is maybe it is. Because it's still in Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Massachusetts, a uh, notoriously race, racist free place, mm-hmm. no racism in anywhere in that area. Oh, really? No. Yeah. Especially in Boston. It's a wonderful place. Everyone gets along. Don't you get a key of racism, which is an invention of the South and never crossed Boston. the Mason Dixie line. There's not like a history really? of people being stabbed with flagpoles or whatever. Or Northerners taking trains to the South to view public lynchings. Yeah. Yeah. From what I understand about the history of racism in the country is most of it was just polite disagreement with black people's right to exist. That's right, yeah. <laughs> like like a black person would just be standing there and a lady would be like, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, and black people were supposed to just be like, all right. And then they would fade away. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, we get introduced to uh, Letitia Letty as uh, Atticus and Uncle George refer to her. Um, she's in town talking to her sister, who's like a musician of some sort. Um, what do you mean and, some uh, sort? We literally see her doing music. I meant like of some. <laughs> I guess I meant of some renown. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um. So yeah, they're playing this whole show here in the uh, in the center of town. Everyone's jamming, having a good time. Just hanging out. Um, yeah. There's a good bit here where earlier in the, before the block party, Atticus noticed that uh, the cops were um, putting away, or like trying to fix the uh, fire hydrant that had been broken by some of the kids. Mm-hmm. So then he breaks it again. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Direct action gets the goods. Yeah. 
So um, there's this whole thing here where Letty is trying to uh, sort of mooch off of her sister for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And her sister's not having any of it. Uh, So then Letty sort of unceremoniously gets added to Uncle George's trip. (laughs) We don't have like a scene where she's like... We don't really have anything where she's like, all right, I'm, I, I, I need your help getting me somewhere in the area. And he's like, all right. But it's it's just like Atticus shows up and she, he's like, yeah, she's coming with us. Mm. He's like, well, OK. Yeah, this this was definitely an establishment for this character, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will say right. I, I will say here um, it doesn't get. The, the characters don't get a. The characters get like a little more established at the end here, but not in a way that's like. Oh. Particularly engaging, I think. Like I, I'm interested to see where these characters go, but they are sort of just blank slates at current. Mm. So far, it's just been a checklist. Like, okay, um, this 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 woman is not financially established yet. Check that off, Atticus. He's looking for his dad, and he likes Lovecraft, and he, he seems like a decent guy. Check that off. And George, he's writing a book. Yeah, yeah, he owns a car, and he's writing a book. There I feel like go. George is the most established, and that's only because uh, Courtney B. Vance is, like, doing a pretty... All these actors are doing good jobs, but, like, he's the one who's trying to, like, imbue it with something, I feel like. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, we don't really have a whole lot to go off of here, but they go on their trip. Uh, going around, having a good time, um, loving, loving life and whatnot. Or actually, before they go on their trip, there's this weird moment where um, Atticus goes into like another, some sort of like other house to call, uh, to make a call to Korea. Can you just call South Korea in the fifties? Oh, <laughs> I, that would be very expensive. I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why he went to another house to do it. <laughs> It's fraud. Or whatever he was doing there. I'm not sure. But uh it's it seems to imply that he had he he left something behind in Korea. Mystery of the other house. Yeah. Yeah, it's a true mystery. Um but he is a Korean war vet. I don't know if he established that part yet, but um yeah, but yeah. He's having a good old time out there. Yeah, probably. I mean that's it wouldn't be the first time that's happened to people as a American soldiers abroad at war. Yes, this is literally a, pl- a plot of an unsolved mysteries segment from the original. Oh, yeah, it's also a plot of Mash. <laughs> Not as good as unsolved and mysteries. They continue. They go on their little journey here after his mysterious call to South Korea. <laughs> um, they st- they uh, they're making good progress or whatnot, but uh, they the, get um, hungry. Yeah, they classic get real mistake. We get faced with like some. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say right here. This is actually hilarious racism <laughs> they're, they're showing here. Yeah, I can't tell if it's like true to the '50s or if it's just like amped up to eleven. <laughs> um, because like the stuff at the end is much more harrowing. This is just sort of like wacky. <laughs> it um, yeah. So they go into this diner, and uh, there's a guy sitting there. And uh, he just immediately leaves. And um, this kid is like, like, apparently the only person who works at the diner currently is this child. And he doesn't leave immediately, actually. They come in there and they're like, hey, we're here to eat. And they just sit there like, like, like in, in silenced awe, just like black people. Yeah. And then um, he they sit on down and the guy leaves. And then the kid's like rushes to the back. So Letty goes to use the bathroom and hears him, like, calling someone up and just being like, you need to get here now. There's black folk. <laughs> at the sa- No, I didn't serve them. Not like la- not like last time. But at the same time, Atticus notices that the restaurant they were at was supposed to be red, but now it's painted white. So he asks his uncle, why was the White House painted white? Yeah. And he mentions it's because it was burnt down. So they, he lifts one of the he lifts one of the tiles of his foot and sees the burnt part of the old establishment, mm-hmm. uh, just in time for them to all make a run for it because there's like a mob of people <laughs> and like a truck coming towards them. Mm-hmm. Um, this is kind of a fun chase sequence, although uh, not as tense as the sequence we get later. Well, it's the middle of the episodes, Watson. It well, can't yeah, be as tense I mean, as the like, one at the end, dumbass. Whoa! Right. 
<laughs> I don't know why it can't be as tense. Because it's yeah, the middle of the can... episode. Is, is someone going to be like, turn it off midway through and be like, it's no way it gets more tense than that. <laughs> Maybe. I know when I was watching like Crawl Space of Breaking Bad, <laughs> the middle of the episode, I just turned it off and I was like, no way they top that. Too yeah. intense. Yeah, so that's, that's exactly what happened to me. And I've never seen the end of Breaking Bad as a result. Oh, didn't even finish season four. <laughs> So yeah, um, they got they they have this chase here, um, and a mysterious silver car shows up, and um, it took me a second to realize what was going on with this because the car the way the car flips they don't imply that there's anything magical about this, but like yeah, but then the reactions or the yeah. lack of reaction afterwards, where they're all just staring blankly. So um, yeah, a mysterious silver woman car appears and stares at them. And they're just like, they look for like a couple seconds. They're like, okay, let's go. Yeah. Well, to be fair, if I was being chased by a mob who was intending to kill me and uh, someone showed up and made their car flip, I would just leave. Yeah, but then we get a scene of them at a family member's house. And they're asking, wait, uh, how did we get out of that situation? Yeah. And Atticus says, it's like, it was uh, Letty's precision driving. And they all disagree with that. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, it's yes. important. I think it's an important distinction that the show is making here that the lady who gets out of the car is the whitest, most Aryan lady <laughs> possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think so, it, I think the implication they're going for is that like she caused the car to flip with not through her car because that would be weird, but there's something very else. difficult to pull that off. Especially yeah. the point where they just instantly die as well. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Because the car flips, and then we don't even really see bodies. We just see the car in tatters. Mm-hmm. And we see we see bodies and blood. Oh, yeah. Listen, and they one, had it coming. And one of the corpses does catch on fire. Oh, yeah. Which, which also... Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, <laughs> now, I would ask a couple questions. I'd be like, hey, who are you? I, yeah, on? I don't even think they realize she was there. I think they're well. Atticus them. for sure does because he see he makes eye contact with her. He seems to be a little bit more keyed in, but he doesn't seem to like what he saw. <laughs> Which fair? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd be scared, but I think my curiosity would uh would rule out anything else. Mm-hmm. No, I think if I were Atticus in this situation and I had just been chased by a mob of white people, and then a mysterious white woman seemed to help me, I would still run away. <laughs> Not risking would, that. Would you not be curious though? I I'd be willing to die for my curiosity there. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I just nah. I feel like I'd be fine be letting it just hang there for a bit. Um. Okay. I, I, now at the end of the episode, when when he sees the car again, <laughs> then I would have some questions. Maybe I would be deeply concerned. You wouldn't just leave that place as well, Swanson. Well, I think I would, is the thing. If I saw that car there, and then, like, I would be like, we can't go wherever this is. We have to leave. Yeah, for the TV Tunis road trip. Yeah. Our own Project Green my, Book. My dad is probably fine. I'm gonna just go. Yeah. Oh, there are limits. A parent's gotta understand this. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they they make it to um, Letty's uncle's house, I think is what this is. Mm-hmm. Um, and he explains some stuff about uh, the area. Yes. How there's like a sundown law, which they don't abide by later. Um, <laughs> and also how Ardham is connected to winch hunters. Yes, which seems might might also imply what happened there. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of like spooky stuff that's apparently going on in Ardham. And um, then later, Atticus and Uncle George have this uh, conversation about his dad, where in the background, you can just hear uh, Letty and her uncle having an argument about money. A screaming match. Yes. Uh, That, I guess, gets abusive. (laughs) It's none of our business, Swanson. (laughs) And they're just outside talking like, hmm, yep, that's rough, isn't it, huh? Well, Atticus goes to do something and he's like, hey, 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 that's family business. That means you don't inf- interfere when someone's getting beat up. Um, yeah, that's 
I don't think that's a good lesson at all that, to take from this. Yeah, I don't think I like the cut of Uncle George's jib with that one. Mm, deeply problematic. I think we need to cancel the 1950s. Oh, and they're already canceled. They're over. Oh, thank God. Oh. Does that mean the 90s are canceled, or does TV keep that alive? Uh, 90s are canceled. Oh, 2000s canceled. and 10s are canceled, too? Canceled. What about 2020? Wow. No, still uh, alive. Still around. Still going on right oh, now. Wow. Now, do we cancel the years or just the decades, Keo? Decades. Oh, so it's gonna we're gonna have to wait ten years to cancel twenty twenty. Yeah. Damn. Oh. Sorry. Damn. I probably won't even be alive by then. Eh, probably none of us will. Yeah. Are, are you guys gonna have some kind of like crippling gambling debt that's gonna kill you or something? That or the revolution. Yes, I'll be the first against mm. the wall when the revolution comes. Yeah, you think? Yeah, then Keo, then Swanson. No, I'm going to be putting you guys against the oh. wall myself. <laughs> yeah, he'll Betrayal. like raise a glass and be like, "Here's to the true bad boys of podcasting," <laughs> and then shoot us. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, they uh, they continue on their way in the morning, um, and they make their way close to Ardham, but he's looking for like a specific road of some sort that doesn't seem to be on the map. They don't seem to and be any spend... roads, apparently. Yeah, the, they, there seems to be like no indication that there was ever a road, <laughs> uh, which is always a good sign when you're trying to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so they spend a lot, they spend most of the day circling the same like area, trying to find it, and they don't. And uh, this cop pulls up, because it's almost sundown, to inform him, hey boys, it's almost racism hour. <laughs> Halloween three yes. the racism hour. Hey, Swanson, you're you're really downplaying how uh, menacing this guy is. Well, yeah. First, he comes out brandishing a shotgun, which is always a good. That's a good de-escalation tactic, I've heard. Also, he is a cop. Well, yeah, so that that also makes it ten times more threatening. <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much just gonna kill you right here on the spot." Oh wait, I guess you have five minutes. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> And uh, the guy's like, well, uh, we're just going to go uh, south then. He's like, no, you won't get out of here right at, in that time. And so uh, he's like, well, uh, what if we go north? He's like, you just might be able to make it. We'll see. Um, so <laughs> he's also like, yeah, you won't be able to make it unless you speed. And of course, speeding's a violation. <laughs> so they there. this starts this like extremely tense I guess a ch- it's, I guess it's a chase sequence, but it's really not. Oh, they're being chased by time. Yeah, um, this extremely tense sequence where they have to continuously go the speed limit because this cop is literally like bumping into them, <laughs> trying to get them to do anything. <laughs> um, and then like they get out what's and, and what seems like just in time, but uh, you know the next county over also has sundown laws. <laughs> Well, there's a temp police officers waiting for them. Yeah. Presumably so, that um, guy called them in, told them they were coming down the road. Yeah. So they uh, they take them into the woods, uh, prepare everything to kill them, and that's when shit gets real. Mm-hmm. This is uh, this is what this episode is like. This is like the, the saving grace of this episode oh. for me, is this entire sequence. Like, I liked what was going on so far, but I was like mm. wavering on my feelings <laughs> towards it. And then this shit happened, and I was all on board. <laughs> Not just because, you know, all these cops get murdered, which is mm, much, choice. Much but like, discuss. Best wishes. Yeah. There's um these monsters show up, which are, what are they? You they're know, sh- they're, they're like little... Shoguts, but they're also like mole rats. Yeah. They're are, like these no, big Shoguts giant aren't mole like rats. vampires, are they? No, Shoguts are You don't are turn like... into one if you get bitten by one? No, Shoguts are like organic machinery from what i've heard they're like servitors oh. Co- these blobs covered in eyes that are programmed to do stuff from what i've read which is none so, of the yeah, primary these... lovecraft stuff yeah these big old uh creatures come out of nowhere and just take this dude's arm off <laughs> the sheriff's arm to yes. be in fact to be clear and um or no that wasn't the sheriff was it whose arm got cut off i don't know all these white people look the same to me Hey, <laughs> ain't that the truth? Well, were there two sheriffs there, maybe? Maybe, because the one who turns in, spoilers, one turns into one of these monsters, isn't didn't have his arm missing. He had, like, a chunk of it missing. 
Yeah, but like that, the, the one guy who was holding a flashlight had his whole yeah, arm off. Yeah, if you lose your arm, you'll probably die. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter because he got eaten later anyway. But <laughs> yeah, things get like happens. real, things get real violent, and it's pretty great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Atticus and Letitia flee to this cabin. It's like an Evil Dead type situation. Yeah, they uh, <laughs> they get into the cabin and they start like. Uh, they hold the door, and then, like, the sheriff comes in and is like, Open the door, you bastards! And uh, then, then he, he like, gun. orders them to... Yeah, so they open it. And they um, do not. Very important distinction. Well, yeah. They don't have a gun yet. Um, And then they... Uh, they wait... Uncle, his Uncle George gets pushed down. He gets knocked uh, and, over. Like, just, yeah, just sort of waits for the <laughs> coast to be clear. Shockingly, the cops don't just blame them and kill them on the spot, so that's that's a plus. Uh, they can't yeah. think very good when they're being attacked by monsters. Why would, Why is that good thinking? I don't... <laughs> to be fair, the police uh, are also attempting to murder, the, are also probably like really close to murdering these two as well, so... Um, they're probably thinking about it, but they don't do it. Yeah, probably because they have the monsters that are right in front of them to worry about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh his uncle George barely makes it in. Um and they're they're all waiting there. Uh they I don't know how they how do they figure out that the oh, Uncle George tells them, right? That he figures out that they the light is what keeps them away. Yes. Yeah, so um yeah, Attic- he had the flashlight and they weren't attacking him, so he kind of figured maybe that's why Also because they weren't out during the day. Yeah, exactly. The flashlight that he had to take from someone's severed limb, which is great. Um, so yeah, they uh, they have this whole scene where Atticus is going to go uh, race to the car and bring it here, um, and the the sheriff's like, "No, no, no! You, how do we know you're not just going to leave us? Even though two of your friends are right here." He's like, "No, let her do it because I'm a yeah. horrible person." <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying, like, you think you're smart, thing of very basic deductions. Yes. <laughs> um, that might be the other reason why he doesn't just kill them, is because he's not very smart. Yeah, I think he might be projecting a little bit. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's, he's just shocked that a black man can think of, like, really obvious things. <laughs> like, oh, you're su- su- suspecting us of a burglary. Why don't you check our car for stolen oh, goods? This, oh, you yeah. think you're smart. <laughs> the sheriff is like, this Negro's got an enlarged thinking muscle. <laughs> Can't have that. <laughs> to the gulag he goes. <laughs> I don't think he's going to the gulag. Well, it's hard to say. <laughs> not it's, in, it's, it's the, not it, in America, it's probably, buddy. It's probably like the opposite of a gulag. Well, right? I guess like the, I uh, guess there is this prison industrial complex that is yeah. basically a gulag. Never mind. Yeah, you just wouldn't call it a gulag. That's like a. It's like the opposite. It's like the. It's like a reverse version of it would you prefer if i said gallows (laughs) yeah whatever so he says racism is bad folks uh letty runs to the car and uh she mentions that she's like a sprint she was a sprinter in high school um she (laughs) makes it there barely um and turns on uh turns on the lights of the car and we see one of these things like in full and it just sort of starts digging (laughs) like a mole rat Also, I have a counterpoint to what Stair said about racism being bad. Oh, okay. interesting. Think, think, of it, think of it this way. If we didn't have racism, how would we get entertaining television like this? <laughs> Ooh. That's makes right. It, makes it worth it. Yeah. Almost makes it worth it. Checkmate. Yeah. Wow, you sold me. I'm going to become a counter-protester right now. Nice. Wow. So, yeah. Um, she turns on the car, and then one just sort of lands right on the like the hood of the car um and she uh she drives away uh drives into the uh cabin during which previously uh Atticus uh and Uncle George deduce that they're sort of like vampire creatures Mm -hmm. and uh the thing that happens when you get bit by a vampire is you turn into one and that's like right when the guy turns into one of these things and they're telling the cop like shoot him (laughs) <laughs> and the cop's just and like, like oh. and he gets immediately eaten. Um, Atticus grabs the shotgun and immediately shoots this thing. 
Um, although it doesn't like have, it doesn't work in super well. Uh, <laughs> luckily the car crashes right into the cabin and the thing just runs away into the night. Um, and oddly enough, we hear some sort of like whistle and all these things just Ooh. disappear. Yeah. Interesting. Something to think about. Yeah. So, truly something to think about. Mm. Best wishes. Um, so, uh, we find out that like. Everybody, everybody's fine, and by everybody, I mean the three main characters and none of the police officers who are all dead, or these creatures. Um, rest in peace. So I guess they go through the woods the uh, rest of the night, which, if that situation had just happened, I don't think I would immediately start going through the woods, but... Um, and then they go to, they make their way to uh, a mansion, which is presumably in Ardham. Um, and what they notice there is the car from before. Ooh. Yeah, uh, you didn't mention it's daytime at this point. The sun oh, has yeah, rose. it's daytime at this point. The sun has rose on a new day. Morning is here. Um, and they get greeted at the door by a, another, like, extremely Aryan man um, who greets them and mentions that Atticus, they've been waiting for Atticus, which is always a good sign when... <laughs> We've been expecting you. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's pretty much the end of the episode. As in the episode uh, ends after that. Yeah. That's right. Uh, final thoughts on this? I was amused yeah, so, and engrooved. Yeah. I was entertained by it, but once again, I'm going to express a little bit of confusion at that review we, you talked about earlier where they said this was like profoundly original because it really wasn't. It was um, <laughs> it was entertaining, and they definitely were able to build effective tension and have you know interesting action, all that stuff, but... I'm not gonna say it was like groundbreaking original content or anything. Yeah, I think the th- I think the original part comes from the fact that like a TV show about black people, where all of the cast is predominantly black, isn't isn't still not super popular or like well known, like, especially one where it's like set in the '50s and it's about like pulp adventures. I think there's something that they're purposely doing here, where they're having black characters go on pulp adventures from the 50s which is historically white like not none of the people in those black and those like 50s sor- short stories are ever ever black <laughs> so it's sort of like ash versus the evil dad sort of yeah I, I guess it's original in that way but um the thing that really doesn't scream to me as originality is the um you know a lot of the stuff here is pretty rote like establishing the characters all that stuff it's all uh, most of it is just kind of like window dressing kind of filling out check boxes but it, it was serviceable at there's least. nothing new yeah. under the sun um i will say that i don't think yeah i think the the character beats and the story that it's telling at the moment isn't like super original um but i think the theme that they're going for here is potentially original it, we'll have to see how it plays out but um it was fun. I was entertained the entire hour. I wasn't like looking at my watch, being like, oh, "Another tense sequence of racism." Uh, now I gotta talk to Swanson about this. Yeah, yeah. I always worry when I have to talk to myself about something. <laughs> well, you have to talk to Dark Swanson. Yeah, oh, yeah the Swanson that appears in Swanson's reflection that doesn't match his expression oh, at all. What did you think? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I have a real Twin Peaks sort of <laughs> energy when I look in the mirror. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to give this a tune in. I already gave it a tune in. <laughs> 20 um, minutes ago. So I'm going to give this a tune in. Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, that's a tune in on Lovecraft Country. The Holy uh, Trinity. That's right. Go go watch. Uh, it's a good show. Ooh. That's about it for uh, this week's episode of our show. Um Ooh. Once again, if you uh, if you like us, if you want to like support us in some way by giving us some cash, uh, we have a Buy Me cash. a Coffee page that you can find at Buy Me a Coffee slash TV Tuners, mm-hmm. or find the link at our Twitter bio at TV Tuners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if and if you're thinking, man, I enjoyed this podcast, but I'm not giving it any money. That's impossible. Then what's even better than cash is give us more listeners. Tell your friends Please. about us and tell tell them that. You know, we have Swanson here and Dark Swanson both here on the podcast, and they're fantastic. So, tell your friends. Two ta- right. two great tastes that are essentially the same. 
Um, and yeah, uh, every Thursday we have a bonus podcast where we talk about the <gasps> multimedia franchise known as Bleach. It's the Bleach cast, the thousand year Bleach cast to be exact. Uh, and yeah, we're getting in the nitty gritty of it there. So you can go listen to that and uh, there's have lots a great of swords time. this week. Yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's jam packed full of swords. They should have called it um, Blade. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. You think they would have gotten away with that? No. Just calling it Blade and nothing else? <laughs> Blade sword. Maybe it's like B dot Blade. Ooh, okay. <laughs> uh, but that's going to do or it for this week's episode of TV Tuners. Uh, until next Blade week. with a Y. With more TV goodness. We'll be back then. Bye. Farewell. It's over. Will you survive? Hey, folks. It's time for the TV Tuners Denver Fact of the Week. Did you know that Stairmaster wants there to be an exactly 10% black population in Denver for some reason? 10.2%! Wow!